Hi all, I have another absolutely amazing game to show you today. This is Leela ID 61068 against Stockfish 10. Time control 3 minutes with a 2 second increment. The opening set is the amazingly crazy Halloween Gambit. So it starts off E4, Leela playing white, E5 from Stockfish, Knight F3, Knight C6, and if you want to be adventurous, Knight C3, so instead of the classic Royal Pairs. After Knight F6, you can be super adventurous here with this Halloween Gambit. Knight takes e5. So is this absolutely ridiculous? Is this only to be played at Halloween, this particular opening? Or is it actually interesting in its own right? I have actually used it myself uh, quite a bit in Blitz. It, it is very entertaining sometimes. Okay, so Knight takes e5. End of book. Now Leela plays d4. We have Knight g6. Knight c6 leads to more provocation actually instead of going to g6 immediately uh, provoking d5 in this position could lead to trouble uh, after d6 this is an interesting uh, position start position in its own right so this is the less provocative uh, option just going to g6 immediately we have e5 knight g8 bishop c4 and here is one established kind of try against this gambit kind of refute it or take the sting out of it at least to sacrifice a pawn with d5 try and establish some blockade potential get the pieces out rapidly for black so d5 very interesting bishop takes d5 is played c6 i mean there's other options here that have been seen before knight going to e7 this position uh, has been seen before there's an over the board game with bishop b3 uh, which was actually interesting Pollock who was only rated 2170 managed to beat Man Laniuk 2519 uh, in 2012 so yeah there's an interesting uh, stem game there so yeah it's very very interesting territory for the daring so anyway in this game we have c6 bishop b3 and bishop b4 this uh, takes away the potential for knight e4 later if this knight's really taken off the board. Uh, for example, if it's not played, say bishop e7, that does mean there's also congestion for developing the knight. And say the knight has to go to h6, bishop takes f4. This could end up being pretty pleasant for white with that massive form pawn, the knight being preserved. Uh, white's getting a very, very nice position, for example, like this with good potential uh, here with this this kind of stuff going on white's getting a really dominating looking position with um, but actually it's it's not difficult it's rather it's difficult to prove an actual edge for white in these scenarios okay the knight's pinned to h7 it's difficult for both sides to do much beyond this this is just a fictional game but it does show bishop e7 might actually be uh, you know a plausible try here but we see bishop b4 white castles bishop takes c3 this is, this does hand white the bishop pair clearly but uh how powerful is the bishop pair in this scenario we see bishop e6 black's trying to get the light square bind on the position f4 queen d7 so really trying to lock down the f5 square uh, so if for example bishop takes b3 the breaks against white's pawn potential are less say black has this idea f5 white has still mobile pawns in the center here in this scenario which could be quite menacing for example like this if black has to give up the a pawn if black doesn't give up the a pawn then white crashes through with d5 in the center and this is just really uh, unpleasant white's building up actually a concrete clear advantage uh, with the central pawns so that's to be avoided so Black has to tread with great caution here already, it seems, because of the potential of white's central pawn mobility. So queen d7. Uh, we have uh, bishop a3. So technically, uh, yeah, cutting across. So even if the knight goes to h6, black cannot castle kingside. So the knight blocks that, so facilitating castling kingside. It seems a natural move anyway, keeping the blockade on f5 and also d5. We have c4, though. 
now things get super super interesting stockfish indulges in quite a tactical plan there does seem to be if you are a human player you might be looking at trappable pieces actually intuitively and it seems as though this piece could be trapped with a5 a4 so that's um, it looks as though you know is white having to play c3 and, and what about the c4 pawn after hasn't isn't on guard duty there for c4 so this is a very very interesting uh, plan stockfish uses now which seems entirely justifiable to play a5 before we plunge into it though if black castles uh, d5 is interesting cd cd bishop takes f5 it seems taking the breaks away like this to see what happens uh, we can see actually white can actually get some material back and probably be uh, in an equalish position just about so if white wants to cash out after a move like that it seems as though yeah castling d5 is possible as a cash out option uh, here if we just look at this again uh, f6 is probably the, uh, one of the strongest moves on bishop takes this is also uh, fairly okay for white actually uh, there shouldn't be any problems for white there either uh, so okay interesting position so a5 it seems totally justifiable to threaten to trap the bishop and it just seems super awkward you know with this bishop on a3 as well there's no a4 so clearly it looks as though this is a big big problem uh, c3 making way for uh, the bishop to come to c2 at the cost of losing c4 but that cost associated with that there's less of a breaks on f5 but surely the rook is being attacked here white is already white has already sacrificed the whole piece already surely losing the exchange to go basically a rook down is far too much it's like science fiction surely if this rook doesn't move uh, but just before we we check that out uh, if bishop f5 with more of an interest in blockading say uh, this position it seems as though actually this is actually really tricky for black if casting queenside bishop c5 the king isn't that happy in this situation say knight g h4 rook b1 there's a lot of pressure here after queen d2 black could try and generate some counterplay it's not really going anywhere uh, for example like this queen c2 eyeing that pawn which is very weak here and then white's going to get a, a big advantage it looks as though yeah this is very very difficult to defend so uh yes uh these situations with bishop f5 they're interesting but they seem quite pleasant for white here this situation what does black actually do if king d8 d5 the, the bishop stopping uh castling kingside so okay uh black took on c4 and after f5 now f5 was played yes not moving the rook remarkable and if we have to look at this position <laughs> if 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 yes after this white is essentially playing a rook down believe it or not for one pawn let's count the pawns three four five six one two three four five six seven so one pawn but if we count the rooks there's only one rook here and there's definitely two for black okay there's the bishop pair though the bishop pair make this really interesting and this these central pawns so there's visual compensation but uh does this defy the gravity of extra material here or not fascinating scenario the knights are stumbling around still so this one goes to f8 so that is a feature of the Halloween gambit knight stumbling we have a, a very very interesting key move it seems queen f2 just holding things here giving potential later for any d5 if black dares castle queenside black didn't dare castle queenside black played g6 so let's say casting queenside bishop d6 might actually be the best the best start for this and then d5 now so threatening queen a7 and then threatening checkmate after that so c takes queen a7 this situation bishop takes a4 is mega dangerous yeah it's going to be 
uh, disaster for black after losing the queen. All the bits will drop off. So yes, this situation, if casting queenside, if queen c7 here, let's have a look at queen c7. Uh, it doesn't actually do much. If white's just building up like this, white will build up in the center and push these central pawns through if black doesn't try and do anything. Uh, so the disaster like this in terms of the central pawns pushing through. So this is just one little scenario. Uh, so yes, very, very tricky. Uh, so black commits the g6. We see f6 and again moving a knight, knight f5. And again, a knight kicks with g4. Bishop takes f5 here would do white no favours. Just doubling the pawns but getting the queens off is a total disaster. Black could freely give up that pawn. So two pawns but for an extra rook. But look at the blockade here. Black's going to be absolutely great and happy about this light square blockade if black had feelings. So g4, knight h6, h3. There's a, a very interesting idea now to sack the knight to simplify to get the queens off potentially. If knight e6, instead of sacrificing the knight, if knight e6, rook b1, casting queenside, this situation is actually rather tricky. Black can still play knight takes g4 at this point. And it seems as though, uh, unless we pursue ruthlessly this variation, at this point, technically, black's doing very well. But it turns out, as, as the position evolves, this is just the fictional, it might be the case that white can actually uh, put up more than good resistance, actually at least get an even position with, with queenside pressure like this culminating in winning back some material. This is just a fictional game example. But it seems at some point, you know, it looks technically very, very good for black, but white seems to have the trend, upward trend in the position. So yes, h3, um, knight e6, uh, seems um, plausible but uh, in, in the game uh, here after h3 we have actually an immediate piece sack knight takes g4 so this means instead of white being a rook up white is the exchange down now has got the three pieces here against the three pieces there but uh, has lost two pawns there, so let's count the pawns. Two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six. So black is actually a pawn up and the exchange up. So this should still be pretty good for black, surely. Uh, okay, it's not as glamorous, perhaps, as being a whole rook up. But here after b5, uh, bishop e4, these bishops are working quite well together. They're very happy together here. Partners in crime, rook c8. And we have a very interesting move to try and damage the pawn structure and make white's pieces even better. As a team here, can you see what white plays in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay, a puncturing move, c4. Yeah, if, if left alone, c takes and d5, these pawns are, are pushing forward, or d5. So knight e6 was played just to put some stuff on the board on b takes there's also yeah on b takes there's rook b1 and the rook going to the seventh rank is pretty dangerous uh, this scenario with the rook runs rampant winning material uh, is unpleasant for black in fact white can get back for black's c pawn here uh, if that's eliminated the two connected pass pawns uh, with the bishop are definitely uh, give give white the massive winning advantage there in that example so it's very tricky to just take on c4 here it seems because of this rook infiltration we have knight e6 c takes c takes and d5 the pawns are going forward and we have what attracted me aesthetically actually about this game here we have the central pawn seem to be against the two islands of pawns on the flanks emerging a very peculiar looking smart scenario knight c2 bishop c1 so that was hitting the bishop. Bishop's protecting itself by moving knight b4. Maybe this is a little slip up. It's tricky. It's a very, very tricky position. Rook c4, for example. Okay, if black's trying to be a nuisance, trying to get that other rook out, black technically looks okay, but 
it seems often the trends are, are with white. It's actually very difficult to make assessments of these positions. Let's have a quick look um, at King D7 instead uh, with a deeper uh, kind of game example, fictional game example. This this scenario uh, ends up being uh, even actually when it's got a lot of check potential and the F pawn is is quite dangerous. It ends up being technically even. So these are very, very tricky positions to navigate, it seems. So knight b4, we have e6, rook c4 now. Uh, you might think, well, can black just not take the pawn here? Uh, let's ask that question. If we take the pawn, d6, d7 check, and taking here, bishop g5, white actually ends up uh, with a nice edge in this position and instead of uh, that if f takes here instead of knight takes a2 d takes yeah these pawns are pretty dangerous this scenario is quite amusing with king safety now being a major issue so this scenario uh where the bishops are pretty lethal on the, on those diagonals uh ends up being a big advantage for white so yes uh here if um on king f3 F7 check is also uh, possible. This is just this is nice for white. So uh, rook c4 was played. Bishop f3, h5. Bishop e2, rook c2, king f3. Rook takes e2. So not even <clears throat> the exchange up now, but this scenario is just fascinating visually. The flank pawns versus the center pawns. Nice bishop versus that knight, which has to stumble around. So king d8 was played here. If black castled, e7 is strong. Just pushing through with d6, that's absolutely crushing. So uh, king d8, king f3, b4, bishop e5, which puts a lock on the c7 square. and means actually if white gets a chance, white actually m will bypass this knight and get into the black position potentially g5 rook d4 g4 check king g2 king c8 if here a3 then rook c4 is super dangerous after e7 check rook c7 d6 this is going to be mating with d7 checkmate so uh king c8 d6 king b7 uh, if f takes this is hopeless d7 check and d8 queening white's also got that pawn in reserve here so uh king b7 d7 f takes f7 rook d8 and the game ended here uh, if it continued in this scenario uh for example bishop f6 b3 taking here letting black even queen is fine uh, here because white is now the one that's a rook up after the check we can play bishop d2 as white stopping any queen e4 even bishop d2 white's having a huge advantage here and this pawn's also about to queen as well so I thought this was a truly fascinating game a whole rook down but the breaks were taken away for, for white's central pawn expansion the dynamic possibilities are wonderful. And this is something I intuitively experienced with this Halloween Gambit, that uh, sometimes you can get great uh, pawn capabilities, pawn, uh, massive pawns, connected pawns, dangerous initiative indeed. Un unbelievable compensation to find the extra rook that black had there. So black tried to sacrifice a knight for two pawns and was the exchange up with the extra pawn and that that wasn't very good either that transition okay so maybe you'll consider playing the Halloween gamut because actually in a lot of variations it does seem to be really quite wild and exciting for white more fun for white sometimes and uh, there's a interactive course there Kings Crusher TV slash Halloween that you might want to check out with it's a free course with trainable variations find out the nuances of, of different defenses key lines hope you check that out and I hope you enjoyed this game Thanks very much.